Okay, so this video is about vacuum forming. Um, we can see from a previous uh, video, I was talking about draft angles, and you can see this little mold here for a small plastic case, it has the draft angles on. I always have to have draft angles when I'm molding because it ensures that the plastic will then easily slide out of the mold once it's been formed, okay? Now this is our vacuum forming machine. You can see our heaters uh, are all lit up here. So these are the various different heaters that are on the top of here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine heaters. If we had a large base, we might only use, say, half the heaters if we was only using certain areas. But because we're kind of heating the whole area, I want to make sure that all the heaters are on. Now, this was left on for probably around about 10 minutes, okay, to ensure that it's up to the correct temperature for vacuum forming. And it's, it's at that point now, so I'm ready to go. Now, my mold is going to be placed onto this, this gridded area here, okay? Now, we want to make sure that we don't place it right close to the edge here, because otherwise that, that won't form the case there. And also, if I had more than one object, I wouldn't want to place them too close to each other, because obviously they would merge into one case. So I'd space them evenly around, leaving a bit of space in between. I could probably, if I was using a product this size, I could probably make about one, two, three, four products to fit onto that base. So I'm just going to place it on there and I'm going to put it in the middle because I've only got one object in this case. Now, the plastic we're going to be using to form with is this. This is high impact polystyrene and the thickness of the material is 1.5 millimetres. Now if I'm worrying about the, uh, the timings and the selection of this, I can look at this little chart down here. So you can see we're using polystyrene, which is PS, in this case HIPS, high impact polystyrene. It's one and a half millimetres thick. So that means I need to use 40 seconds. So I can see I've set my timer here using the controls and I make sure it's on that 40 seconds. Now, the plastic often comes with a, a protective film. So I'm just gonna take that protective film off now, discard it, and you can see we've got a shiny layer. On the other side of the material, it is matte. In this case, it's a little bit dusty, but it's a matte surface. We've got to decide for our tray whether we want a shiny surface on the outside or a matte surface. So I'm gonna go for this shiny surface so I'm going to be leaving it shiny surface facing up. Now with that in the middle, I'm going to grasp this handle securely down here and slowly but surely move it down. What I don't want to do is let go of this and find it crashes into the base because what will happen is it will move this. So if I've got it set neatly in the middle, I slowly and steadily move it down to the base without crashing it into the bottom. My plastic then gets laid carefully over this silicon uh, capping piece okay i'm going to lay it over that and make sure there's no air gaps or anything getting through because that will prevent the, the suction or the vacuum from occurring so i'm going to place it over like this and then bring down my first clamp lever over this toggle clamp here now we have to push down quite firmly but that should snap down and it should be fairly firm to make sure that we get that vacuum seal uh, occurring when it's clamped in place and our mold is lowered down on the platen, we're going to bring the heater across like this now remember, all of this, you can see by the signs, is gonna be very, very hot. So I don't wanna have my hands anywhere near it. The closest I wanna to get to is this black surface. And the color there, the, the yellow, is indicating what is obviously gonna be hot on this machine, okay? You can notice the timer is ticking away down here. We're on about 16 seconds. When it gets to 40, you will hear a loud beep, and that determines when it's ready to be vacuum formed. So I'm just gonna get my gloves on at this point so that I'm ready to handle the hot plastic. The 40 seconds is up. I move the heater back, and I'm just gonna blow this lightly like that. It should ripple a little bit like water, and I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna put the vacuum on and lift the platen at the same time. So vacuum goes on here with this button, and I lift the platen quickly. Now what I'm doing here is I'm controlling with the button at the front of the machine how much pressure there is. And what I do while it's still warm is just push around the sides of the mold like this, and into any details I've got, we've got a little cardboard detail on the top there to make sure the vacuum makes a really tight, neat seal around the side. So that is nicely formed. I'll just take you to the front of the machine. You can see we've got a button here as well. Now what this does is it turns it from a vacuum to a blowing motion. If I just press that down, you will see air is getting injected in and I release and once more. Now this does two things. It helps to cool the plastic and also helps the mold from being released. Now that is pretty much ready um, for the next stage, which would be cutting it down and using maybe the gerbil to get it to shape. So I'm gonna turn my vacuum off there, and basically I'll just leave this to cool down, okay? 
When it is cool, I can lift up this clamp carefully here and take this off and you'll hear a little rush of air. There we go, as, as it's released. Now this can get quite stuck sometimes, so ask a teacher how you can get this out, but it should pop out fairly easy and our mold is in there. Now if this is done with a good draft angle, it should just take a light tap and I should be able to get that shape out. So we'll try it over here, like that. There we go, it's popped out nicely. So that obviously has very good draft angles.